church. Welcome to church. God bless you. You may be seated in God's presence. God bless you. Power and might be unto the Lord forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. Power and might be unto the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Come five times. Power and might be unto the Lord forever and ever. Bibles to the book of Isaiah chapter 55. It's our third and last day of the Spirit Life Conference and I'm so so excited that this is the beginning of many conversations for us in the core of our ministry. Um, our church and this ministry virtues is given to the ministry of the Spirit. And when we talk about life in the spirit, we don't mean life just there, you know, because we are just there. We're talking about being able to bring the quality of life of God into earthly relevance. So we have begun from today or from the beginning of the conference, these conversations that we'll be holding to speak education into humanity about the realm of the spirit it is not to suggest that there have not been efforts we are only standing in our office as those that God has sent to the generation to teach a generation life in the spirit the Bible says that my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 then he says in 1st Corinthians 12 verse 1 he says concerning spiritual I would not have you ignorant so he's saying that if you've been suffering and perishing because of ignorance you cannot afford to be ignorant about spiritual you need to know about what is going on spiritually where is it happening for you spiritually how does your spiritual life affect or benefit your everyday living some of these things you take for granted that you know if you don't know it you don't know it so it's our efforts to try to bring light to this conversation and it's our hope that it will meet the right heart in Jesus name so let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 55 it's one of the many texts I'm going to read we're going to read 
Isaiah 55, Proverbs 23, 23, and then we'll read the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to verse 12. So let us contemplate God's word tonight. Ho, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfied not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. Can I hear your amen on that please? Amen. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Chapter 23. And verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The third reading of the Bible, 2 Peter chapter 1 and from verse 3 to verse 12. Grace and peace. Let me start from verse 2 because it's our scripture. Amen. Yes, I'm sure you know that. Amen. Yes, sir. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you, people of God. Are you there? Say a big amen. amen. Can that amen little, do a little better than that? Say better amen. amen. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now listen to this. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity verse 8 for if these things be in you and abound they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and had forgotten that he was purged from the, his old sins wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure for if you do these things you shall never fall for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ wherefore i will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things though you know them and be established in the present truth praise the lord i deliberately try to read those three scriptures because i will be using them intermittently to illustrate some thoughts and perspectives tonight just an attempt to recapitulate we've been speaking to the subject spirit life and we said it's going to be life conversations for relevance. The objective is very simple. To try to bring to the consciousness 
of every believer that is hearing this message the reality of life in the spirit none of it is a theory that i created it is all from the word of god the bible says in galatians chapter 6 and verse 25 that if you live in the spirit you shall not gratify the lusts of the flesh it says walk then in the spirit and the lust of the flesh will not be anything to you what it simply means is that there is a reality in the spirit that since we live there let us therefore operate from there it says in second corinthians 5 7 that we do not walk after the we do not walk by sight but we walk by the spirit so what it says there it says we do not walk by faith i can beg your pardon we do not walk by sight but we walk by faith second corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 he said for we walk by faith and not by sight that means that our operations really and truly is a faith journey faith belongs to the realm of the unseen and then jesus told us that if any man be born again he has to be born of water and of spirit john chapter 4 says if anybody must serve god he must worship god in spirit and in truth so we are practically spirits we are practically spirits having an earthly physical journey there is a lot of possibility for you to think that you are actually just a physical being trying to become spiritual no we are spirits living in an, a physical world thankfully we have a human skin that allows us to operate on this earth we did say that anyone who does not belong to the kingdom of god belongs to another kingdom absolutely jesus said anyone who is not for us is against us so there's no neutral ground being born again introduces us introduces us into the realm of the kingdom of god any man that is not born again does not belong to god that's an absolute statement what we simply mean by that is that everyone is from god but is not considered to be a child of god we are children of god glory to god when we give our lives to christ our spirit man is activated the bible says that the spirit of the man is the candle of the lord searching the inward parts of his belly what that means in clear terms is that if god is going to talk to you he's going to talk to you through your spirit so in a dream god will speak to your spirit god will talk to this flesh he will talk to your spirit your spirit is what god relates to now the human spirit is a candle in god's hands when God wants to communicate to you, he uses his, he lights it up with his word, he lights it up with his power. That spirit can grow. That spirit has a life. That spirit can do activity. That's why I say walk. It not say walk. Walk. That takes steps. Your spirit has a life of his own. When we die, which we will perhaps, if Christ tarries, I use the word perhaps, the truth is that when that time comes, this human skin will still be here something left so what is the real you is your spirit don't ever think that the real you is this body jesus was talking he said fear god that can destroy both the spirit and the soul in hell so we are not just human beings with physical bodies we are spiritual beings with physical bodies we said clearly that man is a spirit i am a spirit this is very important for you to be able to get the best of god that's why god in his practical sense of reasoning felt that the best place to bless us is in the spiritual realm the bible says blessed be god ephesians 1 3 the father of our lord Jesus christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places all the, that we will ever need they are in spiritual places and i said jokingly in the quotes that some of us are billionaires in the spirit the problem is that you don't need that billions in the spirit we need to bring it to this world yes, amen. amen so how do we converse how do we translate those billions in the spirit jesus talking in matthew 6 said live for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither rot nor moth can corrupt saying to say that when we do certain things we are depositing riches in the realm of the spirit but he's saying that there is a way a man can draw from that spiritual realm 
and benefits in this physical realm some of the deposits he has in the spirit. For example, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ towards us, that though he were rich, but yet for our sakes he became poor, that through his poverty you and I can become rich. What that simply means is that there are benefits that we have in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Are you here tonight? Are you getting blessed? They say it's ritual money. There is a spiritual thing going on there. Praise the Lord. Are, are you, do, you, do you receive what I'm sharing tonight? Something is going on. Okay, let's come to the Bible. Hannah needed a child. Worshipped God in church, in Shiloh. Praise to the God of our salvation. God said, okay, I'll open your womb. That was negotiation, sir. That was some negotiation. I said, when the child comes, I'll make him a prophet. And God said, deal deal can you keep your transaction i'll keep my own that's a conversation god cursed Abraham. god cursed cain in genesis chapter 4 the bible says cain looked at god and said master this punishment is too grievous for me and god said i'm going to lighten it and then said anybody that sees cain the bible says god put a mark on cain that anybody that sees him should not kill him who are the anybodies what is the mark where is the mark? These things I'm only trying to highlight to you that they are spiritual things. Okay, they came to me, Jesus Christ, and said, Hey, pay your tax. He said, Me pay tax. Am I supposed to pay tax? Okay, for the sake of clarity, Peter, go to the river, catch a fish, open the mouth, you will see money inside a fish's mouth. That money was not printed in CBN, I don't know. But as far as Jesus was concerned, it's original money. Yes, sir. You say there's no miracle money. I don't know about that. I, that was miracle money somewhere there. You say the money that does not come from CBN is not real money. That was not from CBN. They picked the money. Paid the tax collectors. Maybe they had change to collect. From river money. Then maybe we have river money somewhere. <laughs> Am I making some sense here? Maybe it's possible that we have river money somewhere. That we have just been moping around looking for bank accounts. Maybe there's a benefit somewhere kept for us. Don't you tell me it was for Christ alone, sir. As the Father sent him, so sent he us. 
Religious minds will not accept these conversations. But I'm telling you today that anything that happened for Jesus, we are eligible for it. Including resurrection. So, I'm saying categorically, there are things in the realm of the spirit that we need to broach. We need to even start the conversation. Maybe we will start to make some mistakes. Maybe we're not perfect. We're not looking to be perfect. We are looking to research. Now, is it possible there's a billionaire here in the spirit that is trusting God for physical cash? The wisdom to convert it is granted. Is it possible? Is it possible that there are resources made available to us that are tangible resources? I know it's easy to believe God for healing. I believe him for healing. But I'm saying to trust God for a new car outside. Is it possible that like Jesus Christ ordered for a new cult to take him to the... To, 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 that, that's how somebody can order for a new thing and tell them the master has need of it. What a currency exchange. That was what he paid for it. Tell the owner, the master needs it. And the person got the code. What a pro program language. Is it possible somebody here is trusting God for a miracle? And that miracle has long been done. That's what I want to discuss. And so let's dive into it. Now, if you look into 2 Peter chapter 1, the word of God says there that according as his divine power, verse 3, hath given unto us all that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. The Bible says that if we continue in these things, an entrance will be granted to us into the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I just want to draw your attention to something. It says that according as his divine power has given unto us all that pertains to life and godly living. That means there are two things there. Life and godly living. The power of God was granted to us so that we can live the two simultaneously. And I've been explaining to us here that what we are doing in this physical realm has direct connotation in the realm of the spirit. A lady stands before a man. Would you take this man as your lovely husband? She says, yes, I do. And the realm of the spirit says, whatsoever the Lord has joined together, let no man... Where did the Lord join them? Is it not man that joined them here? But they said the Lord. Jesus showed up to Paul said shaul shaul in hebrew language why do you persecute me ah, hey, paul said me persecute you me me god forbid he said what is it i am jesus whom thou persecutest when thy persecute you he said the church you have been persecuting is me you are doing it to is that just christ was lying or he was telling us the truth. What happens to you has a direct significance in the realm of the spirit. Everything. Your life, everything. As far as the realm of the spirit is concerned, they are not seeing you as dead if a man dies. They're just seeing that he has paid his own dues. He has, Christ left here 33 and a half. He's seated in glory. Would we say Jesus is dead? I want you to see that they, they don't, there's no intersection. There's just a transition that you've just moved from here. It's like moving from here to Abel Kuta. The realm of the spirit is so thin that you just takes your words to connect. The moment you start to say you want to die now, death is coming for you. How did he hear? We are spirit beings, sir. We attract spirit beings. And our words are powerful. They don't end here with us. They are liberating. They are potent. Joshua said 400 years ahead. Any man that buries. Let me, let's look at scripture. Let's not talk too much. Joshua 6. I want you to know consciously from today. That we are operating in the spirit simultaneously. That's why you can stand here and say, you vow spirit out. Jesus said we should be having regular conversations with demons, casting them out. 
We are not here just to be speaking English. We are spirit beings with relevant power. Look at what Joshua said. Joshua chapter 6. Verse 26. And Joshua adjured them at that day, at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. And he shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn. And in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. Did you see that? So the walls of Jericho came down after they had finished going around and everything happened. And Joshua spoke spiritual words that from now, anybody that tries to rebuild this wall is going to lay the foundation with his first son and build the gates with his last son. This was 400 or something years ago. Come with me to the book of 1 Kings 16. Verse 34. In his days did Ahel the Bethlehite build Jericho. The same Jericho that Joshua spoke about 300 or something years ago, he laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Shegob, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. So Joshua just spoke. Anybody that did this, anybody that did this, left those words. They were hanging. Words never die, sir. They are looking for expression. They are looking for a way to capture whoever will walk into it. 300 years, whoever did it, he met him so. Laid the foundation with his firstborn, built the gate with his last son. People of God, I am here to announce to you, you need to wake up to the realm of the spirit. We are spirit beings and we are blessed with all the resources we could ever need. I believe I've established that point succinctly enough. How then do we relate to the realm of the spirit? Very clear. Job is a classic storyline that I like to follow. The Bible says that the sons of God came and Satan also came. Job chapter 1 verse 6. And then God said, ah, where have you been coming from? He said, I've been going to and fro the earth. This same earth. So there's a Satan going to and fro and he has not stopped. Then God said, have you considered my servant Job? God did not see like trouble for Job. <laughs> Satan said, ah, 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 does Job serve you for nothing? Let's go there. Job chapter 1. Oh, great. Aha. Go down. Go down to the next verses. And the Lord said, okay, go down. I should if you go down to 13 or something. Then Satan, okay, stop there. No, st stop there. No, yes. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for not? Next verse. Next verse. Has not thou made an edge about him and about his house? So God had made an edge. Job was walking, you know, but there was an edge around him. There's an edge around you today. <laughs> he was just walking in his own home, just going, How are you? There was an edge around him. Satan has been checking him. How did he know? He has been coming. This guy has an edge. He couldn't do anything for the edge. I prophesy Satan will not prevail against you. I said I prophesy Satan will not prevail against you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said there was an edge around him. He says there was an edge about him. Look at it. Has thou not, not thou made an edge about him? Though, that those, Job, Job did not know there was an edge. Doesn't mean there was no edge. You are just going entering bus. I almost fell down. You, you all, do you know what kept you? An angel was there. An angel was there on duty. You are precious to God. He said, and, and, and about his house. So he has gone to his house. He has been snoop, hopping around. This job, there is something in his house again, Sha. Maybe he went to the child's school, trying to capture him. Saw the angel say, if you come here, I will cut your neck. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he came to your wife and then the, the, the angel said 
you know I've been here since. I've not fought anybody since. If you call me, I will bleed you. <laughs> about his house. And about all that he has on every side. We are spirit beings loaded, sir. That's why I said to us yesterday that obedience, revelation of the word and spirit, and consciousness is critical for the benefit of these things. Once you lose consciousness of these things, once you are earthly minded or fleshly minded or carnally minded, you will lose the benefits. How do I know? Let me show you. Job chapter 3 verse 25. Job chapter 5 verse 25, sorry. 525 it should be. So God told him, go and try whatever you want to try on him. And let's see what you can make of it. In Job 525. No, give me 325. I think it's 325, sorry. Go back to 325. It says there, that which I greatly feared has come to me. Look at it. So this was the same Job. That though all those things were happening in his life. He did not know. So he was afraid that. Can life just be beautiful like this, not looking like Nollywood? You know, Nollywood, things will start right. Then very soon, something will happen. Then something will happen. And then they will need part two. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's consistent. He said, for the thing which I greatly fear. So, although Job was walking in such luxury and life, he was greatly afraid that everything will collapse around him. Now, you remember I said that fear is a currency. Fear is a currency in the realm of the spirits in the economy of the world. The world sees who is afraid. That's why you can't be afraid. That thing we're saying today is fear. Fear. Fear can make you misbehave. Fear can make you say rubbish. Fear is absolute confusion towards your future. You don't need it. That's why any real angel or any real encounter with the realm of the spirit, the language they will tell you is fear not. Fear is not in this currency. Somebody is here today listening to me. You are afraid of your future. Why? What has he done for you? You are afraid you will die from sickness. I curse that fear in the name of Jesus Christ. God made a clear disclaimer in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. I'm not the one that gave you the spirit of fear. He said, for God has not given us the spirit. If you have it, it's not me that gave you. Once you are afraid of anything, it's not from God. Anything. Fear is a currency. Now, let me explain this before I start to talk about transactions a little more clearly. In the realm of the spirit, take it as a community. Praise the Lord. Take it as a community of spirits. <laughs> Plenty of spirits. <laughs> it is my understanding that they are more dead than the living and I have my reason for saying so that's why that game of thrones to me is very deep there was a realm of the dead they were terrible more than the living it's very true it's very true they understood something even in my not be scriptural I'm not putting any scriptural injunction to it I'm not supporting it anyway I'm only saying using a film to illustrate a point they understood something that the, the army of the dead is greater than the army of the living First of all, in the realm of the living, we are not united. You have your own kingdom, you have your own kingdom, you have your own kingdom, you have your own tribe, you have your own this, you have your own that. But in the realm of the dead, we are all dead. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, we all belong to death. One, one spirit. One. <laughs> there is no way. We are together inside this thing. <laughs> I believe it. But here, what I'm trying to suggest that what I'm trying to say is a community. Is a community. That's why God visited them in Genesis and said, these people are one. Anything they imagine will happen. You see why we have to be one as a church? You see why we, have to, we can't afford some crazy folks trying to confuse the house of God? We can't. Because anything we imagine and determine, God said it is not impossible to stop them. So, God is not God's name oh. God is his status. There are other gods in the realm of the spirit. <laughs> so, that song that says, the king that receives the prostration of other kings. 
Yes. That king is the one we are worshipping. There are other forces. When God was speaking to, to Paul, he said, and to receive him from the power of Satan. To tell me Satan doesn't have power is not true. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemies. That's to tell you he has the power of the enemies. If there was no power of the enemy, then you are not powerful. You are just a being. But to compare your power with something else means that those ones to have power. Jesus talking says, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So, God the Father, listen to what I'm saying. Hallelujah! Our God and the God of the Bible is the God of all flesh. He's the monarch of the earth. He's the creator of the universe himself. The God that does not need anybody to exist. The God that looks and calls himself I am. The mighty one in battle. This God is God. That God is not his name. It's his status. So we spell it in capital G. If you try him, he will show you. <laughs> Egypt tried it. Till tomorrow they are looking for their relevance. Romans, Rome killed his son. They lost world power. Till tomorrow they will never get it. They are a relic of the past now. This God, the God of the Bible, the God of all flesh, the God of all spirits, the Father of light, he's the one that controls these kingdoms. Because he created all things and all things came from him, he has a duty to be a just God. So though the realm of the spirit is existent and there is wickedness there, he doesn't intervene anyhow. There are realms in the realm of the spirit. It's a realm, it's a realm, it's a realm. But in that realm, he created those of us that belong to the kingdom of light. We belong to, that's why it says in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, he says he has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, even the kingdom of light. We are children of light today. This God wanted to establish relevance on the earth. The relevance I preach about now from the realm of the spirit. He looked for a man called Noah. Noah, he established something with him and made a covenant sort of. That covenant was terminated after the flood of the earth. And God said, I will no longer destroy this world with the earth. He's the one that made it. So he was not going to lose his earth. Guess what God did? Looked for a man and found him in Abraham. <laughs> The Bible says, I blessed him alone. God picked Abraham. Abraham, the father of faith, could relate with the invisible world like one who spoke to God face to face. For that reason, God said, I found a friend. I found a friend. I found a friend. And when he was on his journey to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, God said, can I do this without gisting my friend? May you be a friend of God. <laughs> The monarch of the earth needed a friend. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to do it without telling this man. The Bible says God stopped over. <laughs> in the chapter 18 of Genesis, the Bible tells us that he found a friend in Abraham and said, I want to eat. If I was passing by three of them, they called him, come and eat, come and eat. He ate like normal. <laughs> Maybe God has visited someone and you just give him pure water. <laughs> That's why I said, don't, don't receive angels carelessly. Maybe he came to your house, just say, what will you eat? We don't have. We don't have. We don't have. And that word settled in that house. You will never have. What they had, Abraham said, get ready, cook something. He did not know at that time that they were the Lord. It was when they were eating, they now started blessing him. You know, it's after you eat, you bless if I come to your house and I bless you before time, know that it's not the best of the blessings. It's after eating, when I'm happy. And I say, let's stand up and pray. <laughs> Dear bye. It's good for you. <laughs> when they finished eating, the master now said, he said, you will, you will give birth to a child next year. Why would you say so after eating? Before that time, they've never given God food. This monarch of the earth came from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Looked like a normal person. 
walking monarch of the earth owner of everything came in human form and visited abraham but abraham discerned this man there's something about his visits i don't know him i don't know where he's coming from there's something about his countenance i can't let him go without eating if you read that scripture very well he says the other two left and the master stayed with him uh, that was god himself in the chapter 17 if you read it well god had just entreated into a covenant and said circumcise yourself go and read it i'm not the one that wrote the bible abraham circumcised himself chapter 17 last verse at age 99 god visited first verse chapter 18 verse 1 god 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 of the bible likes people that take covenant seriously covenant i told you and I, you know i said it last sunday god does not like casual relationships god is not interested in that's why when you are too casual you don't see the best of the realm of the spirit advance your conversation and have covenant with god <laughs> job had one job said i have made a covenant with my eye that i will not look at a woman lustfully job 30, 31 verse job 30, chapter 31 verse 1 that's what he says is that 31 or 30 verse 1 it should be 30 or 31 please check that I'm sure, I'm sure it's 30 or 31 yeah so how do we now transact the realm of the spirit in the realm of the spirit the kingdom of light god has children all over but he has sons also now what i mean by that is that there are stages in our growth you have little children as a child you have adult sons praise the lord i have sons at different categories I have little children, baby sons. I have adult sons or teen, young teenage sons. So we, we belong there. But there are some people that are not even born again. They are not anything. They are just there loafing around in the realm of the spirit. That's why you can't afford not to be spiritual. You can't afford because the realm of the spirit is real. And listen to me. That's why you see, listen, I, and I'm saying this not like an absolute. But there are some people that they, can, they cannot use for sacrifice in the realm of the spirit. It's very true. You pick them up they are not good for the sacrifice very true you know why somebody has paid a price on them they are marked for something some of us are going unmarked on earth little one that paul stood somewhere and said look let no man trouble like me again for i bear in this body the marks of christ are you marked for christ are you marked for jesus or you are open to any kind of persons they, they say they just kill he went to tell why is it you they will kill I say that with loving care. Please don't misunderstand my heart. I'm not saying it rudely. I'm not saying, but I'm saying you can't be marked and be killed anyhow. Saul died in battle. David said, How can a man die like he's not anointed? <laughs> he knew something that in this lineage, even though we don't have Christ, we cannot die anyhow. So we transact with either fear and faith. Fear being the currency of the world, faith being the currency of the kingdom. The kingdom we belong to is called the kingdom of grace the kingdom of god's son his beloved light and it is by faith we operate there in the economy of grace glory to god Hallelujah. i said we operate in the economy of grace Hallelujah. grace is the extension of god's love towards us the bible says that he has given us all that we need hallelujah the bible says second corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 for we know the grace of our lord Jesus christ it says it says chapter 9 verse 8 it says and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work there is such a grace that will make all things abound towards you it's real it's real you need to be conscious that's the beginning part many of us don't realize it it is consciousness that makes us walk in the realm of the spirits that's why it says to be spiritually minded is life and peace with god romans chapter 8 verse 8 read it up bring it up from verse 6 it says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace with god read it from verse 8 romans 8 bring it up let's just read that quickly so our faith is our currency we build our faith as we intimate ourselves we go look at what it says it says for to be carnally minded is what death what does that mean to be carnally minded you are conscious of only this life everything is physical for you you are not seeing anything spiritual you are not conscious of anything physical everything is your boss is physical everything is spiritual. everything is explainable everything is logical you are carnally minded sir you are carnally minded 
The Bible says, He that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Galatians 6, verse 7. He said, But he that sweat to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Glory to God. I said, 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 Glory to God. Very important to understand these things. So we sow to the realm of the spirit when we study our word, when we read our Bible, when we make our confessions. Our confessions locate us, I said. When we speak words, the realm of the spirit locates you. They realize who you are. They know who is talking. That's why you need to be enriched with words. The word of God says in Colossians 3.16, He said, let the word of God abide in you richly. Richly, richly, richly. Not smallly, not partially, not some. Richly. Great abundance of the word. Let it abide in you richly. Let this stay there. John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me and my word, he says, you shall ask anything, I shall give it to you from my father ladies and gentlemen it's your opportunity to make the most of the realm of the spirit yes, in that realm there is no begging yes, sir. there's only commanding yes. you shall decree a thing and it shall be established yes. so don't take yourself casually again you are beings we are spirit beings living actively on earth when you wake up in the morning there's a purpose why you are awake it was to bring God glory again on this earth. You are supposed to be the extensions of God's glory. If you are not doing that enough, it's because you don't know who you are. You are the child of the monarch of the earth. And God has invested so much in you. For if any man be in Christ, I told you Christ is a location, not just a person. The realm of the spirit is both you and in the realm of the spirit there. There are two extensions of it. Your heart is the realm of the spirit. The realm of, because we fight battles in our lives too. Just like we fight battles that are territorial too. So you have to be conscious of your personality, your person, and also of the realm of the spirit. You have to know that you are living actively. Some sicknesses are not caused by stress. They are caused by demons. For you to be trying to solve a spiritual problem with some logical explanation is illiteracy. How do you want to be doing x-ray from something that was scanned in the ray of the sun? How do you want to do it? Where were your cases by the sun? How? You say, I have my brain headache, I've been stressed. When what is ringing in your head is a bell that is put on repetition. An alarm clock set on repeat. If you are ignorant, you'll be a cheap victim of the world. They will use it to fry suya. And God will be looking. Not able to do anything. Because he's the monarch of the earth. He's the judge of the world. He has to be fair. If your ignorance will keep you small, he can't do anything to change it. He doesn't like it. That's why I said my people are destroyed. Not, not, not Satan's people. Not because Satan is power, because they are ignorant. And this thing I'm saying is not about jow jow. It's not about bobo. It's that you know something. Yes, we know, glory to God. Amen. We know something, glory to God. We understand something of this life. That we are born of God. That we are set in motion by the Spirit of God. That we have a covenant with the Most High God. We're not confused people here. Yeah? We understand something about the realm of the spirits. Don't tell me what I know. It says, buy this truth. Get this understanding. Don't sell it. There's no way you will stay in the presence of God. He says, that dwelling in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I shall see of the Lord is my strength, my refuge, my God in whom I will trust. He says, He shall give His angels charge over thee, that you shall not dash off against the stone. The word of God says that He says this. He says, in the present, he says, thou shalt show me the path of life. Psalm 16, verse 11. He says, thou shalt show me the path of life. For in your presence, there is fullness of joy. Do you know what that means? That means that you can never be depressed again. It's not allowed. 
we are not allowed to be depressed i know you are looking at the bills he says we are not allowed why if you stay in my presence joy will abound now it tells us clearly that it will take joy for you to maximize the realm of the spirit you can't do well in the realm of the spirit with sadness they locate you with your countenance you are afraid they say this one has currency you go buy you go buy sickness from common I'm not happy they will sell you cancer from common I'm not happy today they will sell you disease say I don't feel like it what are you not feeling like it's not about feeling and we know and we know and we know not and we feel we know that all things work together that all things work together that all things work together for the good of them that are called according to and that love the lord we know we're not guessing folks we're not guessing we know So it says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Pleasures. 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 We have a life in this God. We have a place in this God. We have a countenance in this God. There is a realm we walk that the earth does not see us. We are rocking at above a rate that they cannot catch us. We belong to the spirit life. We belong to the spirit life. Real time, right now. Somebody shout hallelujah. So we are walking in this consciousness. You must go with this consciousness. That you are investing in the realm of the spirit. When you are serving God, you are doing something conscious that the realm of the spirit knows that you are doing. You are not guessing. When you are giving, you are giving with joy. You know that your seed there counts for your life here. We know. We know. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost, the short while here. Open up your mouth and release the showers of God. Release the river of God's spirit. we know we know we know we know we know we know the spirit life the words that i speak to you they are spirit and they are life from my spirit to your spirit to give you life Hallelujah. Now I declare on your behalf in the name of Jesus as a prophet of God. In the name of Jesus. I declare that as an heir. Amen. I break every scale from your eyes. Amen. Begin to see the realm of the spirit. Amen. Amen. Begin to conquer in the realm of the spirit. Amen. Begin to see the future in the realm of the spirit. Amen. Begin to see what Satan has planned and detonate them in the Amen. name of the spirit. Begin to understand the will of God. Amen. You will know Jesus. Amen. You will know your angel. Amen. You will hear the voice of God. Amen. Your life is going forward. Amen. In the 
name of Jesus. Amen. All things are working together for your good. Amen. I said all things are working together for your good. Amen. I said all things are working for your good. Amen. I said all things are working for your good. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your joy will never run dry. Your joy will never run dry. Your joy will never run dry. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. You will understand the love of God. Amen. You will understand Amen. the love of Jesus. Amen. You will walk in this life. Amen. You will ride in Amen. You will ride in your high places. Amen. You will ride in your high places. Amen. Somebody oh, shout and rejoice. Somebody give the Lord a round of applause. Hallelujah. In God's presence. Hallelujah. Glory Woo. to God. That's why I want us to take the communion tonight very specially. Knowing that we are not just drinking and eating something that man made here. Jesus, while on earth with us, he did not cut his skin. He gave us something to eat as a representation. You can take a representation. This is a representation of his flesh and of his blood. In the realm of the spirit, blood counts. Blood counts. Blood counts. And the purer the blood, the higher the value. That's why Jesus had no sin. He was a sinless lamb. So he was the purest lamb. That's why he was the most powerful lamb. So he went down to the cross and went up to the cross as a lamb. They went to hell as a lion. Coming out triumphant. The Bible says he made public spectacle of darkness. Triumphing over them upon his cross. Giving us the victory. And said, Alexander, here you go. Do as you wish. <laughs> we are blessed people. We are blessed people. I assure you we are blessed people. Don't let any devil or situation deceive you. You are not ordinary. Stretch forth your hands. Let's sanctify this communion as we take of it. That the life and the flesh of Jesus Christ is what we eat of. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17, 11. 